Okay, let me start. So I'm ready at least. It's good to see you all here. I expected about 10 people, so this is really great. Good have you here. So here on the screen you can see my uh, first development environment that I started making games in. That's really nice and simple. Uh, this is the first one for digital games. So I also developed for uh, this one. It's me going to the typewriter. Yes, you can actually develop and play games on this one. Uh, real arcade games. So maybe uh, next year it could be shown here as well. And that's the development. So now I get to my topic. So the question I uh, had was how many indie games fit in one gig? So one gigabyte. And I also explain a bit about why. Why am I trying to fit all these games in one gigabyte? So here you see uh, a game. Maybe we'll uh, add some audio to it as well. So this comes from the 8-bit era, Robin Hood. So I recently looked this up. Um, there's actually... Uh, see if the audio's working? Let's see if not. Yeah, we have uh, this file that can be about 6 kilobytes being uh, compressed as zip format, which means that you can have over 174,000 games in one gigabyte. So this could be one ounce. Except that there are not so many games uh, like this one that you can find on the internet and can legally uh, use, also in collection. Uh, so we have to think of something else. So maybe is there another answer to the problem? You could think of, well, what if I pack a game generator into a file of one gigabyte, so you can generate lots of games. Well, not infinite games, I think that's not possible. Maybe this number here, 2 to the power, large number, could fit. So this is the amount, uh, let's say, of different integers that can be encoded in one gigabyte, uh, length of uh, value. Uh, maybe that's the answer, but uh, I didn't quickly solve this puzzle, so it's a really interesting question, I think, yeah? how many Games can you possibly pack in one gigabyte uh, if it's not infinite? Or what's the number? But that's maybe a topic for future research. I started doing, uh, doing this more, a bit more practically. So this is what I developed. It's a screenshot of indie games. So it's very simple actually. It's a game menu. So you have these tiles. These are all games, and you can uh, click one and then uh, play it. Let's see if we can maybe show it here. So here's. Uh, Basically, a few followers and executables. We have uh, indiegate.exe here. So at the moment, it's not yet finished. So it's uh, 586 uh, MB. So it should be uh, up to 1 gigabyte eventually, so that it fits on the USB stick. So it's also got some sound here. A relaxing uh, atmosphere. So here you can basically go uh, over the games. You can uh, run a configuration of the game if you want to. And it's simply just Clicking it and it loads. And all of these games are packed into a single executable file of uh, one gigabyte. So, so here you can play this game, Russian Subway Dogs. So you can uh, collect these models from the ground people. <laughs> oh, and you get points, it's very easy to get out again in this game. And you can try a new games. So in this way it's very quick to explore new games and try them out. Okay. So you can move there with the mouse. So I just grab those those games from uh, well on the internet or free uh, available ones. Okay, this is how it looks like. So right now there are 29 games in this uh, 0.6 gigabyte collection, and if you extract plate, you get to around 42 games. You fit in one gigabyte, and also in USB stick. So. so the next question is why am I doing this? So what's the good? What are the reasons for this? <laughs> So one reason is, well, there is this concept of indie game uh, mixtapes that I like very much. So it's about uh, self-expression. So making your own collection of games you like, uh, want to explore later, and putting that in a single mixtape. So what I did not like about this mixtape uh, concept is that people make a list of games and then you still can't play them. It's only a list. So a mixtape is something you put into your cassette deck, press play, and you can really hear the mix, so you get the experience of the content. And with this uh, basically in the game mixtape I'm doing, so this for example you can have a USB stick, stick in the form of a tape, you can put it all on there and actually play all these games too. So isn't there a problem in that? So I'm just taking your games basically and putting them in my collection and giving them away to others. Um, yeah, that's a bit how it works. Uh, you see that also music happening here, so if you have, uh, for example, mixcloud.com, uh, yeah. 
That's basically uh, people mix audio tracks, uh, put them all in a big mix and then upload it for free. So there's actually also no one complaining about copyrights there. So it should be okay <laughs> yeah. as long as you don't put in things for which you have to pay the money. So motivation is also ease of use, like I said, and you can explore quickly uh, hundreds of free games if people make more of these collections. And you avoid any manual searching or downloading or unzipping or re-reading, configuring, all this boring stuff you don't want to be doing. It's just a matter of see the menu, click a game and play. It also means I select these games also being easily accessible, so it should be uh, not going to 15 menus before you can actually start playing. It should be like uh, Bam, right there, uh, load, uh, play. And also, uh, you should have the escape key ready to get out of the game instantly. Yeah? There are some games where you hardly can get out of the menu, so that, that I would not include in the collection. So it's all about ease of use, quick exploration of games. So you make a virtual box of games. So it's like a physical box that you take with you on a holiday. You have uh, 42 games in one or something like that. So you take it to remote places or places without Wi-Fi. So you're stuck with whatever is on your laptop. And it happens to be a big collection of nice games. Now, and you're quite lucky there. The boring places or beautiful places uh, that you want to live up with. So gaming experience on top of a mountain while the sun is setting. Well, you might have that experience. <laughs> so there's also a bit of uh, nostalgia in there. So we had uh, this uh, big 80s uh, cracking scene. Yeah? So you would have games like this with, uh, where the cracker had completely changed all the text in the menu and, and written, scribbled uh, his name all over the place. Usually there was some mysterious Kilroy person who cracked, uh, well, I think almost 20% of the game. And there was also the Packers, so the Packers were people who fitted uh, not one or two games, but maybe even three games on one floppy disk. So they did this by compression. So they had uh, compression algorithms to fit as many games as possible on a floppy disk. And that could mean that if you loaded the game, you had to wait for 10 minutes uh, watching the game unpack. So was the, the process was going on, and it took by the time these 8 bit processors, etc., took yeah, maybe 10 minutes. So it was a huge uh, downside as well, and sometimes the level uh, 3 work, but the level 4 didn't work anymore after having played hours. Uh, so it's uh, not ideal, but uh, well, it's just uh, the way it was back then. And uh, yeah, that also usually had a menu, a game menu on the floppy disk. So you want to have a single physical thing, it's nice, so you can pack as much games as possible. And that also means you can use these ugly old USB sticks that you have lying around. So one this one of the dome tower uh, of one gigabyte. I actually never used it, but <laughs> now it can get the purpose because you can put such a collection on a USB stick and then uh, basically go around and drop it at random places in town or at game conferences. Hope somebody finds it and dares to stick it in his computer and click run. That's still a bit of a question. Whether that, will that would be a nice uh, sort of guerrilla gaming activity uh, that you can do with that. And these devices are really cheap. You get them off we, uh, people have them in cabinets lying around and it's not so much use for them anymore. And there's also this concept of the free bundle.com, so uh, that is uh, another, you could say, uh, attempt. Somebody is doing something similar, so you want to create a bundle with nice games and then uh, give it away for free. Except that with this free bundle, you don't you basically get the whole collection once you still have to individually download games through the developer website, which is still a hassle, huh? so you have to unzip the game, put it somewhere. In the case of indie gig, uh, basically uh, the game is also unzipped, but it's put in a temp folder of your window, so you don't even really see it. It all happens in the background. Well, I don't know if there's any more time. Uh, looking to the session leader, I could, could tell a little bit about how. Uh, so the why was now the content before, so why I'm doing this. So there's also how there is this uh, software I use, Enigma Virtual Box. So this allows you to pack everything in a single executable file. So this is how it looks, quite a simple, simple interface. So here you put in uh, this bin of files you want to pack in a single container. So here's the zips for all the games that are in here at the moment. Some uh, DLLs and uh, the exit file. And if you click here, uh, process, and it starts to pack these files in a single collection. And that's something you can uh, easily 
put on a USB stick or release on the internet or put on BitTorrent or whatever you want to do with it. So this is the tool I use. Yeah, there's also the software to make this menu. Uh, it's not that complicated. Um, it uses C Sharp and the Monogame library. Also the Artemis C Sharp Entity System Framework. Uh, something I wanted to experiment with. So I put this in, so it's kind of making an own game engine that can also be used to make games. Using it for the menu in this case. Uh, yeah, as I said, the, the games are installed in the temp folder, so that means the next time you play them again on the same machine, you still have the save game state that you had before. But if you ever think about uh, deleting your temp files, then it means that your mistakes lost. But you can also move out games you particularly like. You can, if you want, you can move them out of the temp folder and put them somewhere else. Okay, what are the tricks to reduce the file size? We can because we want to have as many as possible into one gigabyte. So what you can do, what I already did, is you can downsample uh, .wav files. So if they are in the, the, the highest, highest quality, you can uh, half the sample rate uh, or even stereo to mono, things like that, so to make it smaller. And as a player, you will hardly notice in many cases. You can recompress MP3 to a lower quality. It's a similar story. And you can say, well, you're kind of doing damage to a game in that way. Yeah? So uh, yeah, that's indeed. Also, what uh, the, the crackers uh, of the 80s were doing, and they were really damaging the games in the process, and they didn't care that much about. So, of course, I try to now leave the games a bit more playable at least, but uh, you can do things like if you want to like, scribble your name in, in the menus if possible, or uh, yeah, fill with audio files. You could even put inside the game already have a saved game state, so you can uh, put it there uh, so that it starts at a particular level or a particular, particular point in time. Uh, so, you can also do that. Tricks. So, if anyone has more ideas, let me know. That's pretty much what I uh, have in mind. So, this is then the final slide. So, uh, this is, well, of course, not my real name, but uh, my, uh, I could say, artist name or child uh, uh, in Dutch <laughs> in the game garden. It's also have a website and Twitter. So, uh, this is really work in progress, uh, no release yet, but uh, if you have any idea of contributing, it could be just a tip for, hey, this is a nice game to include. Or if you want to say, well, I want to test this thing, I want to sit out, then of course welcome to uh, contact me. Okay, maybe some kind of questions or... Uh, questions?